Thank you for joining me today. My name is Ali Zarko. I'm a uh, techno-functional consultant with Ably Pro. And uh, this is a series of videos where we're talking about field service, Salesforce field service. And this is the eighth video in the series. So today we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about um, route optimization within field service and how important that is in terms of routing technicians um, appropriately and in, a, and in the fastest manner. Then uh, we'll talk about complex work, what that is. And then also we'll talk about multi-day work, which is essentially work service appointments that would span across more than just one day. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the uh, demo and um, have a look and see what we have. So here we are. So we're going to first go to the field service admin. So if you come over here. Field service admin. What we want to do is come to the field service settings. And the first, first thing we're going to look at is the route optimization. So we're going to come to scheduling. And then we're going to come over to routing. So uh, field service essentially has four main types of routing, one being aerial routing, uh, which computes the shortest distance between two locations based on a straight line. So if you were to look at a map and you have two locations and just draw a straight line, that's what aerial routing is. The next um, type of routing is street level routing. Um, computes, computes the distance along roads or transportation routes. Um, the street level is based upon the actual uh, road speed measurements and the expected travel speed based upon the road type. Um, you know, and, what, and street level calculations uh, take longer to actually calculate than aerial routing. Uh, the next type of routing is uh, predictive travel. Uh, this builds upon street level routing. Uh, it incorporates time of the day data into the calculation. So, it, you know, fact isn't. Uh, traffic and things of that nature. Uh, predictive travel applies only to the optimization operations, scheduling operations like book appointments and candidates action um, are not included in uh, predictive travel. Um, the next is point-to-point -point predictive routing. This is the newest type of routing that's available in field service. Um, and what that does is estimates the travel time using the exact service appointment location and considers the time of the day. Um, this routing is used across all scheduling and optimization operations. So once again, this is where field service is going towards and uh, you know, point to point predictive routing is, it will be replacing predictive travel and street level routing. Um, as of right now, um, you know, it is uh, those, uh, those other options for um, routing are available. So if you look at aerial routing, aerial routing looks at your travel speed lip, travel speed unit. So, and this is an org wide setting. So you can even do miles per hour or kilometers per hour. And then you can change your default travel time within your org. So you can actually say, say 25 miles an hour. Um, so this is what aerial routing looks at. Mm -hmm. Now, the other one is um, enable. You basically, if you decide you want to use enable speed level routing, you would have this checked off. But as I said, going forward though, um, Salesforce field service will be using this point to point uh, predictive routing, um, and we have that checked off here. Um, and then also, if you want to uh, calculate travel and break times when it's um, doing the optimization for the uh, routing, uh, you have these checked off. So as of right now, these are by default um, checked off uh, within uh, field service. So once again, you have aerial routing, street level routing, predictive travel, and point to point. And you know, uh, point to point predictive will be replacing predictive travel and street level um, routing. Okay.
Next, what we're going to talk about is uh, complex work. The work complex work is essentially if you have uh, multiple service appointments that would be dependent upon one another or one after the other or um, in a series of service appointments. Um, so what we'll do is we'll come to um, once again on the, uh, the field service settings, scheduling, I'm going to click on general logic. And if we scroll down here, you'll see a section that says uh, from complex work. You scroll down a little bit here, you'll see a uh, enabled complex work and we have a checkbox. So we want to make sure that that's enabled so that we can um, continue the configuration and be able to do um, complex work. So now what we'll do is let's jump over to actually. <clears throat> We're going to go do the um, setup. And we're going to go to the object manager. We're going to go to the service appointment. And under first um, service appointment, we're going to go to field sets. And then under field sets, we're going to look up. Um, Service. service appointment list column. And what we want to do is, I already have it added, so you want to add the uh, work type. So I already have it added, as I mentioned, but you would just drag this and just add it to this field set. So after that, go back to the object manager, and we want to go to the um, service appointment object again. And go to page layouts, field service, FSL, service appointment layout. And what we want to do is, on this layout, we actually want to add a new section. I've already added it, but multi-stage is a new section you want to create here. So I'm actually going to multi-stage. I'm going to just change this actually to complex. Complex work. You can keep it one column. The other thing that you want to do is uh, make sure that the height in pixels is 600 at least. Um, and you'll see why um, late in a, once we actually go to the page layout. The other thing that we want to do is after you've added that section, that we want to come to the uh, field service, I mean, pardon me, visual force pages. And we want to add this right here. It's uh, VF739 complex work. Once again, I've already added it, or you would just drag this down here and add it to the uh, complex work section. After you've done with that, you would save it. And now what we'll do is jump over It's a service appointment. And what we do is we look at this service appointment here. So under details, if we scroll down, we'll see a new section, which is called, we have to refresh this, but I have renamed it. It's multi-stage or complex work, whatever you've called it. So you'd see this new section here. So that visual force page, is this entire uh, thing that is being displayed. That's why you want to keep it the height of this 600 uh, pixels. So, so what we've got here is essentially, uh, let's do this. Let's delete this here. 
So first appointment, we're just going to say here. And then the other one is this. And we're going to create a dependency. Well, actually, if I didn't do it correctly, it put them alongside each other. So I'm going to just come here, delete that. And I'm going to click in the second appointment. And now it says dependency type. So it gives you a number of options here. Same start, start after finish, start after finish, and same day, or immediately followed by. So we're just going to select this one, start after finish. So what it'll do now is actually give you a graphical representation. The other option you'll see here is also sign appointments to the same um, service resource. So we're going to check that off, create dependency. And now what you can see here is there's a service appointment. After this service appointment is completed, it allows you to um, go to the next appointment, which is dependent on this one here on 19. And also you can see it says same service resource. So the same technician is the one that has to do this work. So what we'll do now is we'll go to the Gantt, the Gantt view. And if you notice over here, we have service appointment 19 and service appointment 20. And you'll notice this icon here, which is basically like a chain link saying that this appointment is has a dependency and also um, service appointment 20 has a dependency. So what we can do is we can come here. What we'll do is actually click this one here. Put this one here. There's a number of ways you can do this. You can do candidate, you can do schedule. But we're just going to click up here on schedule. And what that should do, it should put those two appointments on the Gantt, um, one following the other. Let's click on that again. As you can see over here, it's calculating it. So if we just hover over the service appointment, you can see here, service appointment 19 is first, and then the second appointment is um, service appointment 20. Um, then back to back in this appoint appointment, I don't have um, the addresses located, but then let's say argument sake, you know, you had this service appointment, which was at location A, and then service appointment 20 was at a different location, and if we had included the addresses, it would include the travel times um, for those service appointments. So you'd see a break in here, and then um, you would see those lines that would indicate the uh, travel time. So that's basically complex work. Um, once again, we can come back here, and we can look at these dependencies. So now these actually change colors because they're scheduled. Then if we go back to 20, you essentially see the same thing. So those are dependent upon one another. So it's giving you the time and date when these service appointments are scheduled. Now, the other thing that you can do, I did this manually. Um, what you can do is either using Process Builder or going forward, you know, you could use the flow is automatically set up the required service appointments and dependencies when a work order was created. Um, so, you know, you could, you know, if one work order was created, you'd have a dependency where the other one is automatically um, created also. And when I created the uh, work orders, I did it manually. So just to keep that in mind, typically, um, if you have those dependencies, it's kind of, a, you know, depending upon your processes and things of that nature, you can just have them automatically set up. So, the next one we're gonna talk about multi-day. Multi-day would be where a service appointment takes longer than a typical work day. So let's say uh, our typical work day is eight hours. 
but we have a service appointment that would take 20 hours. So obviously, uh, you know, they don't fit within a eight hour window. So, you know, if you had 20 hours, uh, that would be a service appointment that would span the cost three days effectively. So this is where um, under Gantt, as well as just scheduling the work, that's reflective, like you've got one service appointment, but it would expand cost more than one day, or more than one work day. What we want to do now is just check a setting. So what we want to do is we want to come to the uh, field service admin section, and then under scheduling, uh, general logic, and here you have an option, or a you have multi-day service appointment field. Right now, it's set to the default, which is um, a standard field, which is, is multi-day. If there's um, calculations and formulas, you can create a custom field, and then based upon that, if it's checked off, then um, you could do certain things also in terms of calculations, automatically um, creating um, certain scenarios that might fit for your, for your organization. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over the work types. Actually, before we go to work types, I want to check. So we want to come to setup. Let's click on home. We want to check permission sets. I'm logged in as an administrator, so I have the, this particular permission set by default. Um, but if you have, um, you know, dispatches, you just want to make sure that they have this permission set. Or if you have a manager and they want to be able to do particular type of scheduling, you just want to make sure that they have this permission set. So we want to come to permission sets and you want to go to field service dispatcher permissions. And then we want to scroll down a little bit and we want to go to custom permissions. And we will edit this. As I said, I am an administrator, so I do have this already, but this is just a good thing to um, check and make sure your uh, whomever's gonna be scheduling um, potentially um, multi-day um, appointments has this um, permission. So what we wanna add is this FSL long-term view. So if the user or users don't have this, that is what you need long-term view. So you just wanna make sure you have that and then obviously just save, um, save that um, permission set. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to the admin page. Or you wanna click on work types. So in here, I have already created a work type and we're getting this is extended groundwork. And if you notice here, we have for this particular work type, it's 22 and the unit of time we have defined as 22 hours. So that would mean it's more than just one day. And if the service appointment starts, that would just roll into the following days or the following day or day, depending upon how long it is. So in this scenario, it's 22 hours. So let's come over here and let's look at our service appointments. I already created a service appointment here. I believe no, actually no. And then we go back. Service appointment 18. So this is our service appointment. And if you notice here, it is a multi-day. So that was checked off. So and this is actually a previous one that I had, so it's defined as 16 hours when I created it from the work type. So now if we go to the Gantt view, we're gonna actually we'll keep these two service appointments and let's see what the system does. So the service appointment that is a multi-day, so if you notice here, the service appointment 18, it has a little um, icon here. It looks like a clock with an arrow pointing to the right. Uh, that's indicating that that is a multi-day service appointment. So right now we only have Bobby Fisher and he has two service appointments scheduled on the Gantt. So let's go ahead and click 
on that service appointment, which once again, once again, is a multi-day, 16 hours, so it won't fit in one one particular day. So let's click on schedule, and we'll see what it does. Okay, so it scheduled the service appointment. It's actually going into overtime. You can set up your policies in terms of how you want to handle that. So if you actually scroll, you'll see it's going across and um, it's actually going into the third day. Yeah, it's going into Friday, but it's the same service appointment. So for this particular one, it's not um, the operating hours are not being enforced here. Those haven't been set up. But as you can see, it's, it's, it's stretching across multiple days. Um, so that's basically multi-day. Um, service appointments, and that's how you would, you know, configure it and set it up. Um, I think that's pretty much it. So once again, we covered um, route optimization or routing options that we have, um, complex work, which is what we have right here, these service appointments. We have those um, chain links here. And then the final thing that we looked at was multi-day. And once again, multi-day is, uh, as you can see in the Gantt, it has a separate icon saying that it's being extended out over multiple days. So that's the end of the demo. Um, hopefully that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, um, be you know feel free to ask us. We'd be more than happy to respond to your questions, um, large or small, whatever the case may be. Um, once again, thanks for joining us today. Here is our contact information at Ably Pro, uh, phone, email, uh, and our social media um, web, uh, locations that we have. So once again, thanks for joining me and have a good day. Thank you.